This is KGW News at Noon. All over the state, folks with good jobs can't find housing. Folks who are struggling with affordability can't find housing. It is an issue around the state. So we know that this session, I know, that the bill that we're working on has to make it through the legislature because it's the set of tools that we need to jumpstart our housing production. That was Oregon Governor Tina Kotek speaking earlier today about an affordable housing initiative that she plans to push during the state's upcoming legislative session. That's also our top story here at noon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Drew Carney. The governor and leaders of Oregon's House and Senate held a press conference this morning to preview next week's session. The governor outlined some of her priorities. Now, besides affordable housing, those priorities also include the state's fentanyl crisis and supporting summer education opportunities. But Governor Kotek spent most of today's press conference highlighting her housing bill, Senate Bill 1537, which she described as a, quote, comprehensive approach to jumpstart housing production. Republican House Leader Jeff Helfrich echoed her sentiments, saying that housing and addiction are both top priorities in this session, with an emphasis on Measure 110. We are facing a crisis with Measure 110, the addiction crisis, the crime that has been part of that. We're also facing housing and homelessness. Measure 110 is the voter approved measure that decriminalized possession of small amounts of certain drugs in the state. As a whole, Oregon lawmakers seem to be in agreement that they have a lot to tackle over the next six weeks. Just yesterday, the governor, along with Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler and Multnomah County Chair Jessica Vega Peterson, declared a new coordinated 90 day emergency plan to address Portland's ongoing issues with fentanyl. During that 90 day window, leaders will establish a fentanyl command center in downtown Portland to deal with the impacts of the drug and ways to address them with a focus on both outreach and addiction prevention. We're up against a rising tide of fentanyl related addiction and deaths that are unlike anything that we've seen before. We're stepping up together to take the urgent coordinated action needed to declare a tri-governmental fentanyl emergency because we know we need to do more to respond. Individuals who are struggling with fentanyl addiction are worth investing in, fighting for, and providing a clear path to recovery. As part of this 90 day emergency plan, state police are also partnering with Portland police to stop the sale of fentanyl on city streets. As part of our continuing coverage of Portland's fentanyl crisis, KGW's Blair Bear, uh, Blair Best, that is, excuse me, spoke with an addict and her mother who told Blair that she's doing everything she can at this point to keep her daughter alive. It's really a close up look at how the drug has impacted one local family. You can find Blair's report, the full seven minute story, online at KGW.com or on our KGW YouTube channel. All right, we're going to take a break from our news headlines this afternoon for a look at your weather with this live look for starters out along the Oregon coast in Newport, where it's really been gray since the start of the day, Rod. Yeah, you know, I was just thinking, if you look at all of our cameras, I can't recall a day it's been this shade of gray. It's pretty dark outside. And here's why. Look at the clouds widespread now across, I mean, from border to border, Oregon up through all of Washington. Everybody's got at least some light rain migrating south to north across their area, and certainly here on the west side, that's uh, no different. Earlier on Sunrise, we talked about the fact that if there was a rain bullseye in our state today, we'd be down here in the southwest corner. Look at North Bend. 1.64 inches has fallen. That's since midnight. As you move up north, by the time you get to Astoria, only 26 hundredths of an inch. And despite the fact that Portland's had some raindrops, more than not, so far, just a trace of rain is what's uh, accumulated in the gauge. That just tells you it's drippy outside, but the rain generally has been very, very light. Only three one hundredths of an inch up in uh, Vancouver. Here's Cannon Beach. We showed you the central coast. This is up north. 56 degrees temperature, still pretty mild. And we still have some snow pockets out in the gorge where also some light rain has been falling and it's cloudy. That's the back of the tasting room at Cathedral Ridge Winery and Hood River. Downtown Portland is at 51. Temperatures have been within two or three degrees since sunrise. At most, we'll get up to about 54. I don't see a lot of change tonight. I don't see a lot of change tomorrow. But we do have a different weather pattern sneaking in for the weekend. We'll talk about that coming up. All right, Ron, thank you for that. Your seven day forecast a few minutes away. Right now, though, we have a heads up from ODOT. ODOT says a recent heavy rainfall along the Oregon coast has caused some sunken grades along Highway 101. 
So because of that, they're reducing the speed limit from 55 miles an hour to 35 between milepost 133 and 134. That's between Newport and Depot Bay. ODOT says it also temporarily added some gravel to that stretch of 101 to make it more stable. Next up here at noon, a heated community meeting in Tigard. People showed up last night to mostly voice concerns about a proposal to allow homeless people to park at a local church. The proposal would expand on a program that already exists in Beaverton, setting aside three designated spaces for homeless people to park at Tigard's Christ the King Lutheran Church. To get into this program, people must pass a background check and also want to get into permanent housing. But the general feeling about this program voiced during last night's meeting was one of frustration. Let me ask you a question. Why here? Why here? My question is what security do you have and how can you be sure that I'm not going to need more security? Because the level of trust is not there. Okay. Right. Everything you say, okay. it needs you need to like, take a few steps back city, too. to build that trust. So there's no timeline at this point for when this safe parking program would start at Christ the King Lutheran Church, if it starts at all. The group running this program already has a handful of parking areas in under undisclosed parts of Beaverton, but so far they don't have any set up in Tiger. Meanwhile, Portland police are asking for help to find this missing woman. We have the details there on your screen. This is Jeannie Enyart. She's 47 years old. Her neighbors say they saw her for the last time on Saturday near Northeast 93rd and Holiday Street. Then on Monday, law enforcement found her car empty on the Washington side of the gorge where it had crashed in Skamania County. If you see her, you should contact Portland police. Portland police are also looking for a woman who they say murdered her husband. Annalisa Gold is accused of shooting and killing her husband, Philip Pierce, who was found dead Friday morning at a home in the Lentz neighborhood on Southeast Suncrest Drive near 92nd Avenue. Police believe Gold may be driving a burnt orange Toyota 4Runner with white decals on the back window. Police also say they consider Gold armed and dangerous. In Vancouver, police have released photos of the car that they believe ran over a man and then took off. It's a red or maroon colored sedan, possibly a Ford Taurus. A 67 year old man was crossing Fourth Plain Boulevard Sunday night when he was hit by a pickup truck. He died at the scene. The driver of the truck did stop and is cooperating, but police say the driver of that red car went around the backup at the accident scene and ran over the victim again. Peabot has to replace some brand new signs in a Northeast Portland neighborhood after someone cut them down. The signs closed off one side of the road as part of a greenway project meant to transition Northeast 72nd into a one way road. Peabot plans to use the northbound lane on that street as a walkway and bike path. But that decision has been a bit controversial. Some people are eager for the greenway, but others say the city is doing too much. I walk or run this every day and there's bike access and there's walking on both sides of the road traffic. I don't know why it can't remain a two way road. In a statement, Peabot says it's working on replacing the signs and Portland police are aware of the vandalism. Hey, a big change you may have noticed already at the Burlingame Fred Meyer in Southwest Portland. That store's iconic retro sign is gone. A company representative told KGW yesterday about the removal, citing years of damage and delayed maintenance, forcing them to take it down. Fred Meyer says it plans to replace that sign with a new one, a new LED version. That store, by the way, opened up with that sign 74 years ago in 1950.